Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Mamaroneck School Board Candidates Forum. My name is Peggy Jackson. I'm the co-president of the League of Women Voters, along with Alice Pernick. Our mission is to empower voters and defend democracy. The League of Women Voters is nonpartisan and neither supports nor opposes any of our candidates. The candidates forums we organize provide vital information to the voting public. In addition to candidates forums, our other activities include sponsoring local students each year to participate in the State League Students Inside Albany program, hosting speakers at our annual luncheon and other events, contributing to our local candidate information on the Vote 411 Voters Guide, welcoming new citizens at naturalization court and encouraging them to vote, registering voters, and keeping you informed via our League of Women Voters website, lwblm.org, our Facebook page, and informational e-blasts. We would love for you to become a member and an active participant in our local league. Even if you have just a few hours of time, there's a place for you in our league. Although our name reflects our roots in the women's suffrage movement, we welcome members and volunteers of both genders. Please join us. We need help. During our attention, turning our attention to the Mamaroneck School Board election, this year there are eight candidates vying for three positions on the board. Because of the large number of candidates, we've divided them into two separate forums, and we hope that you will view them both. Unfortunately, two of the candidates will not be appearing. Candidate Josh Lawler informed us that he would not be able to participate due to restrictions imposed by his employer. Candidate Patrick Roman did not reply to our invitation to participate. Appearing in our two forums in alphabetical order are the following candidates. Sally Cantwell, Ariana Cohen, Michelle Metch, Laringal Lolo Mitchell, Leela Mitra, and Andreen Smith. In addition to being aired by LMC, LMC Media, these candidates' forums will be made available for viewing both on their website, lmcmedia.org, and the league's well, website, LV, lwvlm.org. For further information, all the candidates running have been invited to submit information about themselves to the league, which will be posted on our website. The election of the school board members and the vote on the proposed school budget for 2021 to 22 will take place on Tuesday, May 18th, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. In-person voting will take place at your local elementary school, except for the Chatsworth Avenue School. There is ongoing construction there, and the polling site for the Chatsworth voters will be across the street at the Larchmont Avenue Church. There will not, repeat, not be a drop box outside of the polling places. To vote by absentee ballot, you must first submit an application. Applications for absentee ballots will not be mailed to you this year. Instead, you may print out an application by going to the school district's website, mamkschools.org, and clicking on district and then Board of Education and 2021-22 proposed budget. If you are requesting an absentee ballot because you are concerned about contracting COVID-19, check quotes temporary illness or physical disability in section one. Absentee ballot applications must be received by the district on or before May 11 in order for a ballot to be mailed. However, registered voters may personally come to the district and to the district clerk's office at the Mamaroneck High School for an absentee ballot up to 4 p.m. on Monday, May 17th. All absentee ballots must be received by 5 p.m. on the day of the election, May 18th. Before we begin, I'd like to thank all the candidates for appearing this evening. And I want to thank LMC Media for their assistance with their forum. I especially want to thank our program's host this evening, Mike Witch. Mr. Witch is the secretary of LMC Media's Board of, of Directors. He's a retired teacher for the Mamaroneck School District. However, he does not live in the district and cannot vote on school district matters. And now I'll turn the program over to my friend, Mike Witch. Thank you, Peggy. And uh, sharing the screen with me tonight, are uh, Sally Cantwell, uh, you can wave Sally, uh, Ariana Cohen, if you can identify yourself, and lastly, Michelle Netsch. And uh, the eight questions that uh, I will be posing to them were composed by the League of Women Voters. So I wanna add my thank you to the League for inviting me to host this in the interest of 
getting public information out on this important school board election vote. And uh, I'd like to give each of you uh, the 90 seconds that the league has established it. Uh, give yourselves an introduction to folks who may not know who you are. Um, can we start with um, Sally again, please? Sure, it would be my pleasure. Uh, my name is Sally Cantwell. 20 years ago, my husband and I relocated from the, to the US from the UK due to a job transfer with three of our children. Our family um, com was completed by the birth of our fourth child who is now 15 and attends Mamanac High School. All our children have attended Mamanac High School for some of all their pre-college education and three out of the four are now on to the next chapter of their lives. Um, I was employed by Goldman Sachs for 18 years and I was transferred to, to the US to run um, a division of Goldman and ultimately served as one of their managing directors and, and chief operating officer for um, global corporate services where I oversaw um, strategy, budget, execution of a range of global business operations and with a budget of about $200 million. Since 2005, I have held numerous uh, community volunteer positions serving as the president for Homlocks Middle School PTA, the Mamaronet Schools Founda Foundation, the Winwood School PTA, and now currently I serve as the president for the PT Council of, Amer of Mamaronet Schools. I'm, I'm also involved in the leadership team of the Larchmont Mamaronet Hunger Task Force and also involved in the newly formed Coalition for Community. Um, what I stand for, the main three things in, in my world is, is making sure that, um, you know, I focus on advocacy, community work, and building a stronger district. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ariana? Hi, I'm Ariana Cowan. I um, am currently serving as the Vice President of the Marinex School Board. Um, but this is, I'm just finishing up my first term. We moved to Larchmont um, almost eight years ago. We have raised our three children here. I have um, two children at Murray and one at Homics. And I, in addition to being a parent and being on the board, I'm a social worker. I'm now in private practice um, with a group in Manhattan, although mostly on Zoom these days. Um, and, but, and prior to doing that, I've always worked in schools. I've worked in public schools and private schools, both as a social worker and as a, um, the assistant head of lower school at Columbia Grammar. Um, so I came to this role with a real love and passion for education, for a love and passion for working with children, and couldn't sort of imagine a better place to um, volunteer than in my own district, where I could hopefully add some value and some insight into this district. And I really loved the past three years on the board. It's um, been a lot of learning, and um, I'm grateful to be here tonight with these other women who I've also worked very closely with because they too are very involved in this district. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michelle? Yes, I'm excited for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. So my husband and I moved here in 2003. Um, we have three children, an 11th grader at Mamaronek High School, an eighth grader at Homex, and a fifth grader at Murray who have lived their whole lives in this community. Um, I graduated from Tufts University with a major in child development and community health. And I received a doctorate in clinical psychology from Yeshiva University, primarily working with children, adolescents, and families in various clinical settings. In our time here, I've been an active community leader, beginning with roles in the Larchmont Newcomers Club and at Larchmont Temple Nursery School, and then into the Mamanar Schools. I've held multiple PTA leadership positions. Currently, I'm the president of SEPTA, which is the district-wide Student Support Services PTA. My experience extends to initiatives, including the district equity team and the enrollment task force. I've also engaged broadly with other aspects of the community. I'm currently on the board of the Friends of the Community Counseling Center. I previously served seven years on the board of Larchmont Temple, and I've been very involved with the STEM Alliance. Outside of our community, I serve as the vice chair of the Union of Reform Judaism Science and Technology Camp. I'm passionate about the emotional, social, and intellectual well-being of all children. I have extensive knowledge of our special education system and the Student Support Services Department. I'm deeply committed to creating inclusive learning communities. 
I've worked to better our community for the past 18 years, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to further serve the Marinick Schools on the Board of Education. The first question will go to Sally Cantwell. Uh, first opportunity to ask, to answer rather. And the question is this, what do you feel is the biggest issue facing our school district and what perspective, expertise, or questions do you have about the matter that would help move the board forward in best addressing this issue? Sally? Well, um, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I just wanted um, to say thank you very much for inviting me to this forum. I think one of the biggest issues that's facing our district and, and concerns me a lot is how do we continue to educate all our students e uh, equally so that they can thrive and they can reach their fullest potential um, with the many different constraints um, on the budgetary funds. Um, the challenges for the district, you know, the challenge the district faces is the ever important, ever involving and ultimately affects our children. What each, I think, board member needs to understand and be well versed in is all the factors that play into both long term and short, uh, long term and day to day decisions that must be made. Um, what I, my suggestion would be is that the board members must be committed to working on behalf of all the district, behalf of our district for all the issues independently of their personal situations and their preferences. Um, to the second part of your question, I think the way to do that is that as we we have um, we are coming out of COVID times, and I think we there's a lot to, that we have learnt, and I think the time now is for the Board of Education to sit down with the district and say what have we learnt and how can we adapt? What programs do we need to change? What do we need to enhance? What do we need to remove? Um, in order that we can fully educate all of our students to best of their ability, whether that's for them to you know, succeed and go on to college, whether that's succeed and then to go to the workforce. Um, so those would, that would be my answer. Okay. Uh, can I ask the same question next to Ariana? Do you want me to repeat the question? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Ariana Cohen. I am running for re-election for my second term on the board. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, so I think, you know, it, it would be hard to ignore that we are living in a hope, uh, almost post-pandemic world. We're moving into a post-pandemic world. And so I, my sort of, as I think about the challenges ahead, it would be how do we learn from the past year, many of the things that we actually didn't know we could do before that we now can do, and how do we take those lessons and really um, embed them into our curriculum and into future learnings for our district so that this isn't sort of go down as just sort of a lost year. It, while it will have been a challenging year, I think there's been a tremendous amount of learning and growth that has happened. And I, and I think if we can take that and further develop our curriculum, utilizing all of, this, all of the lessons learned, um, that really what has always separated our district out is the education that you get here. And so what that always comes back to is our curriculum. And so for me, the sort of the passion and, and the love I have is how do we continue to move our curriculum forward so that it really meets the needs of every single student of this district and takes them from where they are and helps them achieve their personal best. Okay, Michelle, do you want me to repeat the question? No, I think I got it. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Match. Um, I would say to echo what Sally and Ariana said, the coming out of the pandemic um, is obviously something we can't ignore. And I think the most crucial challenge right now is the social, emotional, and mental health of not only our students, but our faculty and administrators. Um, it has been a trying and traumatic time for all of our families, for everyone in our community. Um, and that often um, people don't necessarily experience the effects of trauma until after the trauma is over. So I think we need to be prepared for what happens when we are out of the pandemic and back to functioning in pre-pandemic times. Um, as a psychologist, you know, I'm very familiar with trauma-informed practice. And I think if students and faculty and administrators aren't functioning well socially, emotionally, um, mentally, that learning really can't take place to its fullest capacity. Um, so we need to be prepared for coming out of the pandemic to 
meet our families and our students and our faculty where they are and support them and provide them with tools that they need so that we can then focus on the curriculum and our teaching practices and um, help all, all of us, all of the community, you know, reach their fullest potential. Thank you. And now on to the rest of the questions. Um, the next one, I'd like to uh, start by giving Ariana a chance to respond first to this question. Um, it's about diversity in the district and it is this, given the cultural, racial and socioeconomic diversity within the school district, how would you optimize the educational experience of each student? So I think for many of us, the reason we came to this district is because of the diversity that it provides. And I think when we think about optimizing it, it's about how do we create meaningful experiences from the very beginning for all students where they have a true opportunity to engage with each other in ways that make them feel connected and bonded and forming true friendships. Um, and so when I think about how do we continue to do that, it's really a continuum. If we can do that from those early days and then continue on whether, you know, through projects, through writing, there, you know, there are so many creative ways that we can have students engage with one another um, and then link through it sort of the love of learning, right? If you're doing even a book group or if you're doing you know, so, some sort of um, pen pal thing, there's so many opportunities that we could be utilizing to really make meaningful connections and really build upon, I think the reasons that many of us live here, which is to be a part of one community and benefit from the learnings that we each bring from our own various homes and our own various um, you know, family heritages um, that I think all students benefit from learning from each other. Thank you. Michelle, I see you agreeing with that. I agree with everything that Ariana said and I'll elaborate in that, um, you know, each human being is unique with a unique set of cir circumstances, a unique history, a unique view of the world. And that uniqueness is what brings like a richness to our relationships. And um, it's really important from K through 12 for us to teach, to teach that, that um, everyone has a story, everyone's story is valuable um, and that we should have empathy for each other's experiences. Um, and to be able to communicate about our differences and ultimately how we're all more the same than we are different. Um, I've had the pleasure to co-chair the Building Bridges um, program at Murray Avenue School for the past eight years, which is a disability um, awareness and acceptance program. And, and that's the message of the program. We use um, teaching about specific disabilities to teach that concept that differences aren't scary. We all have things that make us different. And ultimately, we're all the same inside. We all have the same feelings. We all want to be part of a community. We all want to be respected. We all want to be heard um, and valued. Um, and I think if we can teach those lessons and learn about each other's experiences and each other's perspectives, um, it makes all of us stronger. Sally, it's, it's your turn optimizing the educational experience in our diverse community. You're muted. I think you're muted. No, you're muted. Um, I just wanna say first off that I think we're incredibly lucky as Ariana said that we live in a community that we do. There are many times when I've said to my children, wouldn't it be nice to move to Rye where it would be easier to access the roads? And their view has always been, no, why would you do this? We have more, there's no diversity there. We have diversity here in the sense that you know there are many different people that make up make them make up the the pot on the on the district perspective and that comes from my son who's 27 who has been through the district so they've always viewed this as a very rich um, school environment where they can learn and understand the different cultures and they can understand different perspectives from the other students that they are surrounding i think one of the things that we have to teach at the very beginning and it starts at kindergarten is how do we respect each other how to respect each other's cultures, um, how to respect each other's languages, how do we not shout if you speak in, you know, if your English is slow or, you know, and not sort of shout louder to, you know, to, to frustrate the people. I think we have to start early and continue with the same 
themes of what's important to us from a respect point of view through all the schools. And it has to be the same language and it can't be any different. Um, I look at diversity not purely as a, uh, in a, as a color thing of a race issue. I think it covers an enormous uh, a breadth, whether that's special education, whether that's um, you know LBGQ. I mean, it, it covers so much. And I think we have to educate everybody on all the different aspects and make it feel normal. I mean, you know, because um, uh, we have so much to learn. I was personally, thank you. Just kind of short. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the next question from the league, um, and Michelle, if you'd answer first, what approach do you favor with our current enrollment situation? Well, I served on the enrollment task force, so I have good experience in understanding our enrollment challenges. Um, I, we were fortunate um, that since the enrollment task force was created to handle what we thought was an emergency um, situation with the enrollment, enrollment really has leveled off and we've had the capacity for students in our elementary schools primarily was the challenge um, in terms of physical space. Um, but we see those large groups of um, students moving through our system and entering comics um, with I think a record number of sixth graders next year. Um, and through the task force process, um, we examined kind of this historical nature of enrollment and found that it really does fluctuate over time. We've had um, lows where they've considered closing an elementary school, you know, in our district, which thankfully they didn't. And highs where we thought, you know, we couldn't handle one more student in a building. Um, and really need to identify strategies that are durable over time that can handle the um, ebb and flow of enrollment in the district. Um, and the task force um, report does outline seven possible strategies, one of which is the current um, neighborhood schools model and the different pros and cons in terms of how they rate on durability. We don't need to get into all of the details that are in the report. Um, I, I think the board needs to re-examine the work of the task force um, because even though the crisis seems to not be currently here, it will come up again in the future. Thank you. Uh, Sally, would you answer that same question, our enrollment situation? Of course, I, um, I, I personally love the, um, the walk to school um, elementary model um, as a preference, because I think that, first of all, it keeps the kids active rather than them being driven around by their parents or by buses. However, having said that, I think it's important that at some point one does have to do the re-review and work out what the future plan will be rather than wait until there's a time where there is a panic situation. Um, and I think we also have to look at all the financial aspects that go with that, as well as you know, the restaffing of it if that was necessary. You know, if someone came and said there's another three million dollars if we, you know, merge this or change that, I think as a district, we could not walk away from that. We would have to do the analysis as to whether that really makes sense from a financial point of view, but also from a, an educational point of view. And I think brings in that diversity stuff of making sure that people, you know, how does that mold in together? And, and how do we make that an effective learning situation for all the students? Thank you. Ariana, our enrollment situation. So I think, you know, having it, that, it sort of began as I first joined the board and then it you know, a pandemic happened and it took a pause a bit. Um, what I would say is this, I think the way in which it began, there was incredible work that was done, but it was done in, in a response to what felt like a perpetual, you know, a, a possible crisis. And because of that, I think um, there wasn't really universal buy-in. I think there was pockets of buy-in and pockets of real distress around it. And so I think if the district and when the district does relook at this, I think we need to relook at it um, a, from a strengths perspective, what is working, not what is sort of, what are we solving for, right? So now we sort of have a minute to pause and do that. And then B, how do we really get by in with whatever we decide and really then um, all come together around that buy-in rather than can, sort of perpetuating this conversation every couple of years when we have an ebb and a flow in um, numbers. And so when I say that, what I really mean is, I, you know, we didn't have the chance to go out and ask the community like truly 
if we were to you know take a survey tomorrow what do the what does the community want from all pockets i think there are assumptions on either side about what individual groups want and i think assumptions lead to challenges and i would really want to really start with that as the baseline and then proceed from there thank you um, the next question has to do with budgets um, if you had an opportunity to add to this year's budget what would be your priority if you had to make further cuts where do you think those cuts could be made? Sally, would you take the first crack at that answer? I think this is a very difficult question to answer. And it is difficult because I think we're coming out of um, a pandemic year. And so I think a lot of the budget and the way that it's built is built surrounding how do we do help the students with the social emotional aspects, re, you know, sort of catching up with not the learning gap, but catching up to where their academic uh, level should be. And I think for that reason, some of the items that are in the budget are there for that purpose. So I think in a different world, um, we wouldn't be looking at this type of budget. I think going forward, we'll probably, the world will, the, the, it will all sort of write itself in many ways, because I think New York State in a year's time will look incredibly different to the way that it looks now. You know, we have funding coming in, but with people leaving New York State, who knows what the budget will be. And I think that will then help us rewrite it. Um, and I think we will then have to, you know, it, it's all built on programs. So we then have to look at the programs and see what the programs cost, which ones we want to invest in, which are the one, right ones for us to keep in order for our district to be at the cutting edge. Um, Ariana, same question. So, you know, I think to Sally's point, we have an interesting thing happening with our budget this year and that there's sort of these blips of additional funding that are one-offs because of the pandemic. So we're able to do things like um, make sure that we have levels of coverage in terms of next year that are fabulous or, you know, systemic things um, that have needed to be done, but it is a one-off. So we, can, we can't invest with that money the way we would want to, let's say, in long-term programming or in um, personnel. That said, I would say that's always where, if, if I were to sort of find you know, a pot of gold or there's more money to be reallocated, that's always where I'm gonna choose to put it. Our district is you know, perpetually held up and thriving because of our teachers and because of our programming. And if there is you know, any money to be found, that's where we need to be reinvesting um, because that's the future of this district. Thank you. Michelle, same question. It's fun to be given like a blank check, right? To be able to distribute however I'd like. And so um, I could go on with that for a long time, but um, I think one of my top priorities, if I could add to the budget would be um, to provide professional development training for our aides and campus supervisors on conflict resolution, um, mental health, um, and helping children navigate social situations. Um, I, I think those are areas that would have great impact on our students since um, the aides and the campus supervisors are often the first line um, when there's any um, conflict or any emotional and behavioral disturbances. Um, and to follow up with Ariana said in terms of the teachers, I would also follow that up with more professional development and support for teachers. Um, I don't know in specifically what areas, like, you know, that would be up to the administration, but if I could add to the budget, I would definitely add to that. Um, in terms of cutting, that is a much harder um, answer because um, things feel bare bones, you know, they feel like they're as low as they could be um, right now. Um, so it would really be hard to go line by line through the budget and find like little bits here and there to cut, but there's nothing major, I would feel comfortable cutting right now. Okay. Uh, the league has their next question. It's about the district leadership. And uh, it goes first to Ariana. And it is this question, what characteristics do you value the most in our school district leadership? And why? I, I think the thing I value the most in our district leadership is um, the perpetual ability to reinvent the wheel and relook at it. And I, it never has it been more true than in this pandemic year. I mean, the, the reimagining that has taken place from March until now April has been incredible to see. And that's from, you know, all the way up 
to the building levels, um, to the teachers, the sort of um, ability to sort of say, you know, no one had training in managing a pandemic and no one had training in educating students in this new way. And, you know, there were imperfections along the way, but what I really appreciated watching and being a part of was, you know, from last March, even to September, the acknowledgement of where there still needed to be learning. And I think that that's a huge asset, right? The ability to sort of say, you know what, we needed to learn from that and we need to do that differently and better. And then the ability to continue with that learning from the September to March plan to now the April to June plan um, is really, I think, the hallmark of this district and something that I think we should, you know, the leadership should be incredibly proud of. Thank you. Michelle, same question. Yeah, I think the, the qualities that I've been most impressed with um, are the dedication of our district leaders and certainly in the pandemic, but before the pandem pandemic, the, the hours and attention and thought and care put into decisions regarding um, the education and safety of our children has been, I, I think, unparalleled. Um, and and the dedication to respond to parent, you know, I'm a parent at each level. And last year during the shutdown, I had conversations with building administrators in e about concerns at each level, and was immediately called back by principals and um, spoken to like thoughtfully and. My, my issues were heard and we problem solved together and we came up with solutions. Um, so the dedication and the willingness to engage in conversation and problem solving um, is remarkable. Thank you. And Sally, the same question? Um, I have to say that I think our district um, administra administrators, our district teachers, you know, all the staff were just outstanding and unbelievable. I don't think that we would have been back at school had it not been for Dr. Shapps's leadership and his leadership team. The fact that they, you know, they they know how, as Dr. Shapps would say, I know how to do education. I just don't know how to do pandemic education. And I think from that, the fact that they just ran with it and that they convert, that they, they switched the kids straight away over to here you go, full remote. You know, yes, there are gonna be glitches. The teachers were tremendous, they got on board, which is never easy. Um, and I think at every step they have, they haven't stayed where they are, they've always tried to progress and to move on. And I think that is a is in a tremendous leadership. I think also knowing the kids, that's been very impressive. That if you look at our social workers who understand the needs of all the kids, you know, regardless of where they live, and the fact that they reached out. They helped them. If they couldn't help them, they got you know they got other people to help. It says a lot about how lucky we are with the leadership that we have. With as I said again, the administration, the teachers, the staff, everybody that was involved, and also going back to the parents. I just want to say thank you from a PTA perspective. You know, having spent we spent all of the same parallel time trying to work out how do we build community, how do we keep school spirit going. And uh, we did a report back to the, the district um, on Tuesday with how it, you know, what we've tried to do. And I, I, I think the thanks goes to everybody for being in this together and making us all stronger. Thank you. The next question, um, given the rising rates of anxiety, depression and suicidality among children, what do you think should be the role of the school district in addressing students' mental health? Michelle, would you take that first? I'll take it, it's right in my wheelhouse. Um, I, I think it's a really big challenge. I know um, Ms. Klein, the principal of the high school recently reported we've had record numbers of students hospitalized um, this year for psychiatric purposes. Um, I also think it's just, it's a challenge for school districts. You know, school districts have been tasked with managing um, lots of different issues outside of education, right? From student hunger and you know, other, other areas and mental health is one, um, where really our obligation, right, is to the education of students. But we all know that if you are um, debilitated by mental illness or emotional struggles, you can't learn effectively, right? So that's where it gets, um, it gets tricky. We have amazing teams of psychologists and social workers um, in our district. Um, that do what they can to support families. Um, Dr. Mazzoni, the 
um, assistant superintendent of student support services and her team um, do everything they can to try to help families navigate um, as they're going through struggles. Um, I, I wish there was more the district could do, um, but there's the related services of, you know, healthcare and mental health services. You know, there, there are things without, outside of our control that factor in. Um, I think the schools are doing the best they can to help manage students' distress. Um, we certainly try to meet students where they are and help them to be as successful as they can given their challenges. And that's what we have to continue to do. Okay, Sally, same question. Um, I think, I mean, I, I, I can feel this from my personal point of view, for sure. Um, one of the things that, you know, this is coming back into this district um, from a social or emotional point of view for many of the students is actually being quite traumatic. You know, when you spend time away, you know, in your remote lands, then you're in hybrid land, and now all of a sudden you've got to face everybody and meet people that you've never met before in a very, sh and, and build friendships in a very short space of time and build trust is really hard. One of the things I'd love to have the district help with um, is I, I would love to see some sort of social group work where they can get the kids to actually spend time sharing some of their concerns and some of their, you know, and trying to talk it out and talk it through. And, that, and I think the other thing is the, the other piece that goes with this is sort of the academic of, is there a way of, we used to have like a jumpstart program that started two weeks before school started to get them back again, academically, socially, just so that they can spend time with people that, you know, they've only got seven more weeks to go, but when they come back in September, they've got to start this whole wheel again. And I think that is important. The one thing I will say that I'm very impressed with um, is how the district knows our kids. So they know that there's an issue. They will be on the phone with you. They will email you. And, and I can say that from a personal point of view and that I, as a parent, when you don't see these things, I truly appreciate that. Thank you, Ariana. So one of the things I sort of appreciated most about um, my time on the board is seeing what uh, Dr. Maloney does with our student support services and what the crisis team has done is truly Herculean. There will always be more need. I see it too in my private practice. There, you know, there, there are tremendous, there was a tremendous emotional toll that has been taken in this past year. And, and um, that all said, what I think I have been most impressed with is not only are we, do we have a lot of programming in place already, but that in spite of the fact that these psychologists and social workers have been working around the clock, reaching out to families, making sure that the child isn't on Zoom, that their voice gets heard, wondering why, going on home visits. I mean, you know, so many things that go untalked about um, that still, there's thought being put into what additional program can we add to next school year to understand that there will be more need. And so just on Tuesday night before the board meeting, Dr. Mazon presented um, something called the Learning Hub for HOMIX, which is literally to grab at-risk students and give them a hub. And you know, she'll get into further details at some point, but that, that kind of innovation, and obviously as a board member, our ability to create and prioritize resources around funding programs of that nature that really innovate and put us ahead and not just react, um, I think is sort of the most important and honestly, um, the part of the job I take most seriously and I'm most grateful for that we can, you know, have these amazing leaders and then support their programming. Thank you. Uh, next to the last question now. Um, Sally, if you would answer first, please. What makes you the most qualified candidate? I believe that I have, um, in my time, um, you know, the last 20 years, I have spent a lot of time within the school district. I think I fully understand, I don't fully understand, but I've had children, my children have been to Central, Mamaroneck Avenue School, Hommocks, and the high school. I feel, I know I've done lots of volunteer work, um, and having sat at the table recently through the PT Council, it's given me an opportunity to understand some of the issues and there are also, you know, issues, there are always issues in every organization, but it's like, how do we, how do we move the school district forward? How do we make it um, continue it to be world-class? How do we make sure that we ask the questions about, you know, the right programs being in place, the right support for the children being in place? 
And I feel like I have a lot of expertise that uh, with the years that I've been here and um, having seen it, and I feel like I can bring much to the table. Will I get it right? Probably not. Will I be caring and wanting to roll my sleeves up and get on a work? Yes. And, and I hope that I, you know, if I was on there, but on the school board, that I'd be working with like-minded people so that we can debate things, discuss things, and continue to make the Maronite school districts the best that they are. Thank you. Ariana, the same question to you. Um, so I think I, I similarly, I come to this um, as a parent, I come to this be, uh, you know, with the experience of the past three years and the understanding that there was a huge learning curve and I'm grateful to have had it. And I hope that I can apply that in my next three years. Um, but with children in the district and with my ongoing passion and love for education and children in general, I hope that I can continue to be a voice that advocates for all students and that helps each of our students come in at wherever they come in and help them exit at their best possible point. And if I can be a part of a board where that is sort of at the front and center of every decision we make, then um, that's really exactly where I wanna be. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, same question. Um, I like to get involved in my community and roll up my sleeves and get to work and leave it better than the way I found it. And I try to do that wherever I go. And I, I've, I feel like I've done that here in my work so far in our community. Um, I have experience um, at all the levels of the school with collaborating with teachers and administrators and parents and students. Um, I think I can bring that um, goal of collaboration with me. I communicate clearly. I am an active listener. Um, I really like to hear people's stories and understand their perspectives. Um, I can think about complicated issues from multiple perspectives and really weigh um, the pros and cons of various situations. Um, and I think that that's a skill that's really needed on the board. Um, I can work with lots of different people and hear different perspectives and, um, and formulate my own opinion and communicate that clearly. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to further serving our community, to helping our district um, maintain our strong level of education and um, strive for greatness in everything we do so that all students feel safe, all students feel affirmed, and all students can reach their full potential. Thank you. Uh, the last question the league has for each of you, uh, this is, we'll end on a positive note here. What do you think the strengths of our district are? Michelle? I think the strengths of our district are things that we've all mentioned before. I think we have um, amazing educators and administrators who are thoughtful and caring and dedicated. Um, and that really is the backbone of what we do here. Mm -hmm. um, all of the rest can kind of be manipulated or added to. Um, and so that is definitely one of our biggest strengths. I think another strength is the diversity of our community um, and that we have multiple perspectives and multiple stories, you know, for people to learn from. Um, so I think those are our, our greatest strengths. Thank you. Sally, same question, the strengths of our district. I mean, as I had mentioned earlier, I think one of the strengths is that we do have you know, we have a limited diversity, but we do have a diverse population in our public school. I think that we have, um, we're very lucky that we have an administration that is always looking to, for us to be at the leading edge and trying to think about, you know, the, the goal, which is how do we get the best for every student? So how do we help each student be successful and be educated so that they can um, become, you know, continue to become great systems and also to be respectful of each other and to be, um, you know, to be successful as they go on in their lives. So, and I think we are, the strength in our district is the leadership. I think it's the teachers. I think it's the staff. Um, and I think the fact that they care and they want to know who our children are. And we're very lucky for that, for the size of our district. Thank you. Ariana, you have the last answer, the strengths of our district. 
I echo a lot of what's been said, but I, I think at the core, it's the people. I think from the community itself, from our parents who are actively engaged and passionate about being involved at every building, at every school level, to the people who work inside of our buildings at every level within our buildings. I think that they, we are all the heartbeat of this district. And I think um, we're really so fortunate to be in a place where people are so committed at every single level in the success of our schools. Um, and that is the reason that we keep moving forward because everyone has sort of this common goal, whatever sort of the differences of opinion and how we get there at different moments. I truly do believe we all have the same common goal of what's best for these students. Thank you. Before I turn it back to Peggy, I just want to say thank you to each of you for the time and dedication that you put in to the school district as a former teacher and a taxpayer. I really appreciate the work that goes into being on a board of education. Uh, and uh, Peggy, you have the end. Thank you, Mike. Um, I want to echo my, um, my admiration for the three of you for your time, your dedication, your interest, making our um, our democracy work, because this is a part of our democracy. So thank you for that. Um, thank you to LMC as always, because they are unique and one of a kind and a plug for LMC. Everyone, please support LMC. Um, thank you to the league in general. And um, please vote. Don't forget to vote Tuesday, May 18th, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>